Yes, folks, it's Tales from the Jails here with John G. Sutton's second broadcast today. I'm going to talk about uh, the singer from The Lost Prophets who's serving uh, 29 years in HMP Wakefield has just been uh, taken hostage by three inmates. So this was a concerted attack. It wasn't just a, a random altercation three inmates took him hostage and stabbed him up uh, he's currently in in hospital uh, supposedly recovering from his wounds I mean uh, the problem that you've got here is that it's starting to run completely out of control I mean when you've got three inmates plotting together obviously there's a conspiracy to uh, injure this man when one or more people join together to commit a criminal offence, it's called a conspiracy. So there was a conspiracy to injure Ian Watkins, and injure him they have. They've stabbed him good and proper, and uh, he is now in hospital. Uh, the thing is, I mean, what did he do to deserve this? Well, he was molesting children, wasn't he? And he'd persuaded the mothers of two children to uh, allow him to interfere with their offspring, uh, one of which was a baby. Now, how you sexually molest a baby, I don't know, but Ian Watkins found a way. He'd, he'd also been forcibly having sexual relations with a girl under the age of 13. So he was a, a full-blown pervert. And uh, he's been in prison since 2013. Obviously, his notoriety has followed him round. But he's in HMP Wakefield, which is otherwise known as the Monster Mansion. And he really should have been under protection. But the problem you've got is that if an uh, inmate is marked out to be attacked, then usually they somewhere along the line. It might take years, but they do get it. And uh, I saw that with Ian Brady at the Scrubs. I mean, uh, he was placed on normal location in D-Wing. And um, he lasted about three or four days, I think, before somebody scalded him with boiling water and beat the living daylights out of him in the recess on D4 landing. Ian Brady. Which, I mean, we all know what Ian Brady did. Murdered a lot of little children along with his accomplice, Myra Hindley. And Ian Brady died in um, Ashworth Hospital, which used to be called Park Lane, by the way. <coughs> and talking about Park Lane Hospital, I'm now going to play you a little extract from my new, my latest book, the audio book, which is HMP Manchester Prison Officer. And, and this deals with me when I went to work at Ashworth um, as part of my training course, to be a hospital officer and this tells about how I went into uh, Ashworth Hospital one of the inmates who I had recognised, re I knew him from the scrubs, came up and introduced himself to me and uh, this is part of chapter 21 uh, recorded by the actor Alan Turton available on Amazon and it's HMP Manchester Prison Officer Part 2, the audio book. Park Lane Ashworth Hospital for the Criminally Insane. The external boundary wall of Park Lane Hospital resembled that of most prisons, 16 foot high and topped with razor wire. The gate lodge was of a modern design, unlike the Gothic monstrosities of the Victorian prison estate, but that did not alleviate the impression of impending doom that seemed to permeate the atmosphere. There may be something about the nature of institutions of incarceration that creates an ominous sense of gloomy intensity, as if the very fabric of the walls is emitting evil intent. Perhaps the unspeakable horrors perpetrated by those locked within the dark brick walls haunted the very ground upon which this hospital for the criminally insane stood. I certainly did feel a tingle of nervous apprehension as I stepped through the gates into a cold, grey-painted corridor leading to a soulless reception room, empty save for two rows of uncomfortable-looking wooden chairs. 
The nursing officer meeting us looked reasonably innocuous, apart from his long, neolithic arms and thick, hairy, ape-like hands. Gentlemen, take a seat, he said, and his voice was an uninviting, gravelly bass growl. There were ten of us on placement at this hospital, and we were to be allocated different locations that would, the nursing officer explained, be rotated, so we'd see, eventually, all the various aspects of Park Lane. Each of us was handed a timetable stipulating our routines for the next two weeks. My own experience was to commence on the main ward of the hospital, where long-term, seriously, psychologically disturbed patients were held. As we had no keys to get through the numerous gates, the nursing officer escorted our group round and introduced us to the most senior staff member in charge of the unit. As I walked into the section where I was to begin my placement, I was approached by a patient who faintly resembled Adolf Hitler. The man had a small moustache on his top lip, reminiscent of the Führer, and his hair was black, slightly oiled and centrally parted. He came up to me, hand outstretched. Mr Sutton, how are you doing? he asked, taking my right hand and shaking it as if he were greeting an old friend. There was something familiar about this patient, but I couldn't quite identify him, though he clearly knew who I was. So you know Graham Young, I see, the staff nurse in charge of the unit said. And indeed I did, though it had been five years since I'd seen him last when I was on the hospital ward of HMP Wormwood Scrubs. Young seemed pleased to see me and motioned that I should follow him to his cell, which I did. The cell was decked out like the Reichstag with a Nazi Third Reich flag draped across one wall and various items relating to the SS stormtroopers of World War II Germany, including armbands with swastikas. There were many magazines and books on strange subject matters. Graham Young was keen to show me his collection of Nazi memorabilia, not that I was too pleased to see his unhealthy infatuation, having visited the Belson concentration camp and seen where the final solution terminated. The staff nurse running the ward I was placed on told me a little of the problems that pertained within the walls of Park Lane. It was, he said, a relatively relaxed regime that... And there you have a little extract from my book, uh, HMP Manchester Prison Officer... Part 2, read by the actor Alan Turton in audiobooks. And if you join Audible, then uh, I think it's about £7 a month. I'm a member, yeah. And uh, you can download a book, one book a month. I mean, if you purchase it just outright, then it's a little bit more expensive. But uh, the book's doing reasonably well. It's got some really rave reviews. I think it's got uh, 81% five and four star reviews. So do have a look at that. And as for Ian Watkins, let's all hope that he gets better soon, eh? So we can get back to the Monster Mansion and meet his new friends. Tales from the Jail. <laughs> 